thank you for that warm introduction. You've made me feel very old today. Um, Asalaam o alaikum. Um, I would like to welcome you all to this event, 16 Days and Beyond. Although tomorrow, International Human Rights Day, marks the end of the 16 Days of act Activism to end gender-based violence, it's really important that we do not lose momentum in our struggle to end violence against women. And it's a great pleasure to see representatives of government, of civil society, media, donor agencies, and also victims here today. Um, you all have a significant role to play in helping to end violence against women in Pakistan. Violence against women is not a phenomenon specific to any one part of the world. It is prevalent across the globe and continues to persist as one of the most heinous, systematic and prevalent human rights abuses um, in the world today. It is now recognised as a violation of women's rights and a global problem of epidemic proportion that impacts both economic and social development. Although substantial progress has been achieved in raising awareness of the scale of the problem, it still exists in disturbingly large numbers in all parts of society. The UN Commission on the Status of Women has reported that at least one in three women globally will suffer some form of violence in her lifetime. Let's just pause to think about that for a second. One in three women globally. I mean, that means that everyone in this room knows someone um, who's suffered violence. Um, it places a great responsibility on all of us to do something about that. And I have to say that uh, you know, my staff are looking worried now because I'm sailing off peace and not following my script. But it, it did make me think about my role as a leader of DFID in Pakistan. Um, I mean, it makes me wonder whether I'm doing enough to give attention to these issues in a program in Pakistan and whether I should be doing better. I mean, and today I'd like to commit to doing better. I mean, it makes me think about my role as a father. I have two sons and one daughter. Um, just reading the script um, in the way here um, in my vehicle, I was thinking, have I spoken to my two sons and my daughter about these issues? I mean, I'm ashamed to tell you today that I have not. Um, but I will commit to you that I will have that conversation with my ki kids. It's something that I need to put right. And I really encourage everybody to start that dialogue in their families about these issues. And it did make me think um, about my role as a brother. I mean, I have a sister in the UK who has suffered from domestic violence. I wonder whether personally I gave her enough support. Um, I think the real answer to that is I probably didn't. Um, I mean, and today I commit to do much better. Um, with the own members of my family who have um, suffered from this issue. Um, so I, mean, I just wanted to say that on a personal note. I mean, I think that's really important. I mean, we've all got a responsibility here. I'm certainly not doing good enough. I commit to doing better. I'm going to get back onto my script now, guys. Um, so one in three women globally suffer some, from some form of um, violence in their lifetime. We are all painfully aware of the devastating impact that violence against women has on individuals on families, communities and countries. It has enormous social and economic costs, undercuts the contribution of women to development, peace and security, and poses a serious threat to the achievement of the internationally agreed development goals, including the, the MDGs. Each day, we are reminded that nowhere in the world is a woman safe from violence. It is prevalent in rich and poor countries, in rural and urban areas, in situations of conflict, and in peace, and in the aftermath of natural disasters. Again, let me just give you a few shocking global statistics. Worldwide, one in five women will become a victim of rape or attempted rape in her lifetime. Violence against women is a major cause of death for women between the ages of 15 to 45. The annual worldwide number of honour killing victims may be as high as 5,000 women. Up to 130 million women have suffered from genital mutilation. <coughs> I just want to say something specific about the situation in Pakistan. Now, in Pakistan, violence against women manifests itself in many different forms. There's been over 4,000 cases of violence against women were reported in Pakistan in the first half of 2009. The highest number of incidents were reported in Punjab, over 3,000 cases, followed by Sindh, 835 cases, NWFP, 327 cases, and Baluchistan, 174 cases. 
The most common cases of violence against women were of abduction, murder, rape, suicide, honour killings, followed by sexual assault, <coughs> stove burning, acid throwing, giving away of girls as compensation, custodial violence, torture, trafficking, child marriage, incest, threats of violence and sexual harassment. I mean, let's just stop and think about that. It's, um, it's an horrendous situation and it's something that we must do something about. It is encouraging to note that the government of Pakistan has adopted several of the international commitments to protect basic human rights and gender equality. These include the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Beijing Platform for Action, and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. The Constitution of Pakistan guarantees equality and protection to its citizens, regardless of their gender. The government has also amended discriminatory hooded and family laws. Whereas concrete steps have been taken, we all know that our legislation alone is not enough. The key challenge is to change mindsets, making, it socially intoler making this a socially intoler intolerable crime. We need to tackle the root causes, change attitudes and behaviours. Government, civil society, media, the private sector and inter international bodies must work together to face this challenge head on. I just want to say something about what DFID is doing. Um, DFID has clear commitments to gender equality, women's empowerment and tackling violence against women. Our recently launched white paper, DFID's strategic policy document, specifically targets violence against women. This issue is at the centre of everything we do. Gender issues are taken into consideration whenever we design and implement our programmes in Pakistan and across the world. In the past, the DFID has supported specific standalone initiatives on women's empowerment, including the Gender Equality Project and the Gender Support Programme. Currently, we are supporting a 2.5 million project on gender justice and protection administered by the UNDP. DFID has also launched a regional programme, a new programme, focusing on boys and men to prevent violence and to find innovative ways of involving them in gender equality programme and policies. DFID will also establish a new South Asia Gender Equality Fund, which will bring together the best policy, research and evidence in South Asia to tackle the root causes of gender equality or inequality across the region. Whilst these initiatives are underway, we recognise that a lot more needs to be done and can be done. I hope that today's discussion will provide us with some concrete recommendations on the way forward. On the way forward. Um, in conclusion, I just want to say something about the documentary you're about to watch, um, the documentary called Bushra Survives. This was produced by the Asset Survivors Foundation Gender Justice Project and DFID to raise awareness and prevent acid violence in Pakistan. Bushra is one of those brave survivors who, who has decided to act upon the tragedy and to ensure that violence against women would not be uh, a fatality. Just recently in the UK, a 26-year-old model um, and TV anchor named Katie Piper suffered an acid attack by her boyfriend. She was left blinded in one eye and underwent over 30 surgeries. She's publicly talked about her courageous battle to recover and to seek justice. This high-profile case in the UK reminds us that violence against women is indeed a global phenomenon and we must work together to eradicate it. The irony in Katie's case is that she was treated by a leading um, Pakistani diaspora physician in the UK. Each one of us, men and women, citizens, policy makers, donors, civil society and media have a responsibility to help end gender-based violence. Whilst governments must honour their commitments and ensure justice um, and redress to victims, we all must speak out in our families and our workplaces and communities to end this global menace. I look forward today to a substantive discussion around the current situation of violence against women in Pakistan, what has been achieved and what remains to be done. Thank you very much.